There is not another verse in this vast volume of the Bible with its 66 books of the Protestants and 73 of the Roman Catholics. If they want to say, I got that too. 73, there is not another verse with eight masculine pronouns or eight feminine pronouns or eight neuter gender in one verse. There isn't. It's an absolutely unique verse for a unique personality, Muhammad. Eight times. Man, 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 man. And they say he's a ghost. This must be a ghost. You know, the Christians in, in India, in Pakistan, when the Muslims started talking about this, they changed in the Arabic translation, they translate the he, he to she, 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 she. So, so you can't say Muhammad is a she, can you? you know, I don't know what they'll do with the Afrikaans Bible very soon. Same thing is going to happen, I'm telling you. If you start talking about hey, hey, hey in Afrikaans, is hey, hey, hey. What do you say for women in Africa? Say. So they'll change it to say, say, say. Then he said, now you can't say Muhammad is say. Can you say that? No, it's very difficult to keep pace with them. Ingenious. Highly ingenious. However, I said, now let's analyze this. The Christians say it is the Holy Ghost. So they say, is Muhammad a ghost? I said, look, in the Greek language, there is no such word as ghost. The word there in the Greek is pneuma. Pneuma, wherever it suits them, they trans translate as spirit. Wherever they find they're getting into difficulty, they translate it as ghost. So, when they say the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, they say the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. So now you can't say Muhammad is the ghost. Can you see? So, you're discounted. I says, you know, making fish over and fall of the other. It's just when it suits you, the way you go around. I says, you know, this St. John, St. John, is the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, verse 7 to 13. The St. John, in the first epistle of John, chapter 4, verse 1, he says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. So the false prophet is a false spirit, a true prophet is a true spirit. He is using the word prophet synonymous with spirit. I'm not doing it. He says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So the false prophets, false spirit, true prophet, true spirit. And this is the title of our Nabi. An Nabi as Sadiqul Wadul Ameen. Is Sadiq al Wad, one who is true to his promise, Al Amin, the truthful, the true spirit, the true prophet. If you go for Hajj, Allah take you one day. On his tomb, there is a beautiful uh, metal calligraphy, which is La ilaha illallah, Al Malikul Haqqul Mubeen, Muhammadur Rasulullah, Al Sadiq al Wad al Amin. This is what the, the unbeliever, the pagans, this is the title they gave him. As-Sadiqul Wad, one who is true to his word. Al-Ameen, the truthful. As-Sadiqul Wad al-Ameen. And the same John continues. He said, the spirit means the prophet that confesseth that Jesus is the Christ, is of God. Look, he's telling you that the spirit, the prophet who said that Jesus is the Christ, is of God. What does our Nabi say? Look, he's made 1,000 million Muslims today to believe that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Messiah, the Messiah. Have you got another Messiah? Have you got another Messiah? No, there is only one Messiah. Jesus our Messiah, Jesus Christ. We haven't got another Christ, have we? No. The Quran testifies. The Messiah who is Abnu Maryama. Behold, the angel said, says, Ya Maryam, Inna allaha yubashiruki bi kalimatim minhu. Allah gives you glad tidings, good news, have a word from him. Ismuhul Masih, his name will be the Messiah. Who? Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus the son of Mary, he is the Masih. The spirit that confesses, the prophet says, who says that Jesus is the crisis of God. But the sick people, I don't know what they're reading. Their book gives them a test, apply this test to Muhammad. Does this man say that Jesus is the Christ? Or does he say Musa is the Christ? Does he say I'm the Christ? Does he say Abu Bakr is the Christ? Does he say Umar is the Christ? What does he say? 
He said, Masih who Isa ibn Maryam, Masih, Jesus, the son of Mary. He is the Masih, he is the Christ. So, he's telling you, that one who says that, he is the true prophet of God. The same John again, he says. John chapter 3 verse 6. The Christians keep on quoting 3.16. 3.16 is a famous verse. This is the only begotten son. Now it has been expunged, thrown out of the Bible. The Revised Standard Version, they threw it out as a fabrication. It's thrown out. The begotten. The only begotten son, the word begotten is thrown out. As a fabrication, as an interpolation. You see? But 3.6, that was 3.16 I was talking about. 3.6. He said, that which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit is spirit. John 3, 6. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Do spirits cohibit? Do they? No. no. What it means is this. That he that is born of flesh is flesh means if you are materially motivated. What brought you here? To this meeting. Ah, oh, says Mr. Didar is going to give us a free Quran. Is that what brought you? If that is what brought you, then you came for material reason. You are a materialist. In the language of the Bible, you are flesh. Your motivation is flesh and you are flesh. Means you are material. And you are materialist. That is the language of the Bible. He that is born of spirit is spirit. Means he that is spiritually motivated is a spiritual person. You don't have to. Spirits don't beget spirits. They don't cohabit. Unless they do it in Christian them, I don't know. But we know spirits don't cohabit. Allah creates them. He has created billions and billions and myriads of them. Without male and female. They are not male, they are not female. They are his creation. By his act of will. So, same. Muhammad is spirit. Means he's spiritual. His motivation, whatever he did, for what? For worldly gain? To become a ruler, a king, what did he do all these things for suffering, trials, tribulations? Him and his, for what? For spiritual motivation, for the love of Allah. He is then doing it for the love of Allah. He is a spiritual person, not worldly motivated. That's what they are talking about. And he, that person, will guide you into all truth. I am saying that, look, I have yet many things to say, many is more than one. He'll guide you into all truth, all is more than one in English. Unless you need a dictionary for that too. Many, all, many means more than one. You understand that? And all means also more than one. That this spirit of truth, he will guide you into all truth. Jesus has many things to say, more than one. All truth, more than one. I'm only asking, for 40 years I've been asking, the learned men of Christendom, please give me one new thing that this Holy Ghost gave you in 2,000 years. Any church. You have 1,000 different churches and denominations among the whites of South Africa and 3,000 among the blacks. Different churches and denominations. And everyone has got the Holy Ghost, they claim. But you know funny thing? They claim gifts to of healing and challenging me. Last night, a young fellow was challenging me to go and heal people. I said, you know, funny thing, the very first gift that they had at Pentecost was people were babbling in tongues. They were speaking different, different languages. And yet, our brother, he can't speak English. Can you imagine? He's, he's got all the Holy Ghost in him, but he can't even speak English. So he said, look, he's asking me, he said, you know Africans? I said, no, I don't know Africans. So he said, I'll read it in Africans for you. Imagine. I said, I don't know Africans, but he must read it, the Bible in Africans for me. I said, where is that gift, that Holy Ghost of yours? Do you need the Bible under your arm? Without the Bible, it's helpless? Believe me. Without the Bible, the learned man, the most learned guy is utterly helpless. He can't do anything without the book. If you take the book away from him, he's helpless. He's like a crutch. Without that crutch, he'll fall. He must have the book. He must open the book. I said, where is this Holy Ghost that's supposed to be in you? Why don't he make you to speak? Because Jesus said that that very moment, he said, he will, the Holy Ghost will make you to speak. Where is he? Why is he deserting you? Desert them. The Holy Ghost is running away. When they see us, the Spirit goes. 
They can't speak English even. They're listening to me and understanding in English and now they must tell me in Afrikaans. So he can deliver a lecture. You see, the guy wants to deliver a lecture in Afrikaans because you people understand Afrikaans. So he's lecturing to you. On the guy's excuse that he is asking a question. Or ultimately he's going to ask a question. So I said, give me one truth, please. Only one. I asked the Jehovah's Witness. One new thing. You seven-day Adventists. One new thing. You DRC. One new thing. You Baptist. What, are you? what church you belong to? Give me one new thing that the Holy Ghost gave you in 2,000 years. You haven't got it. Not one. South Africa, we have problems after problems. The biggest problem, we have the problem of race. Racism. What did the Holy Ghost tell you in 2,000 years how to solve it? We have the problem of alcohol. Last year we spent 2,000 2, million round on alcohol. 